the bikes are packed and almost ready to go uh, this is the the Royal infield which Jeff will be riding mostly and I will be riding the uh, Himalayan and it's all packed and ready to go I actually have all my bags mounted on here um, Jeff put a couple of gas cans on each side of the bike and then I have my tank bag, GPS, uh, GoPro mount. So uh, this is our staging table to get the bikes ready. And it looks like we are about ready to go. So let the games begin. Okay, we're off, off to the bottom of Argentina. You ready, Jeff? All right, here we go, wish us luck. I was listening to this gentleman talk about a month ago and he said, if you wanna be successful in any parts of your life, whatever that means to you individually, he said, you need to uh, understand that you're gonna have problems. And the more you push yourself and the more um, you try to drive yourself, the more problems you're gonna have. So he said, don't wish for less problems. Wish that you were better at solving your problems, which I thought is great, which leads us to my first problem. All right, so we started out here in Buenos Aires and we drove all the way down to almost Azul, and the bike I was riding had some damage. It looks like the engine check engine light came on. Something's wrong with the motor, so we turned around all and drove all the way back, got back to Buenos Aires late that night, and took the bike to the shop in the morning, and they said something's seriously wrong with it. So Jeff found a local guy he knows that has another bike we could rent, that I could rent, but it's all the way in Salta, which is 18 hours away. 
So we loaded all our gear up in Jeff's bike in a truck. A gentleman is driving it uh, tonight all the way to Salta. We are flying to Salta tomorrow and are going to start the journey all over again in Salta. It's going to be amazing. Okay, so we started out with a bang and we have a little problem. Yesterday we left uh, to start heading down to the bottom, well near the bottom of Argentina. And the bike that I was riding, which is a Himalayan Royal Enfield, actually started to uh, lose power and uh, it was acting like it was overheating. We let it rest, we let it cool down, tried it again, check engine light came on, did the same thing again. So we decided to return to Buenos Aires that night. It's about 500 kilometers there and back and bring the bike uh, back to Buenos Aires, took it to the shop. The Royal Enfield dealer said, you know what? This is a big problem, something's wrong with the motor. So we're down one bike. But what we ended up doing yesterday was finding a guy, a local guy here that my friend knew and renting uh, another Himalayan. So our trip is just changing a bit. We're gonna actually fly to Salta, which is about an 18 hour drive, two hour flight, pick up a bike there, and then we're gonna head up to the um, northern part of Argentina near the Bolivian border and then start our way down south. So, a little rough patch, little problems, but it looks like we have them solved. So, one more day in Buenos Aires and we'll be on the road in another um, 48 hours. Uh, what you should do, what you, you will come uh, through Ruta 40 here. So, yeah. San Antonio de los Cobres, acá. Yeah. Boom. Ruta 40, La Poma. So, this is Johnny's. Unlike uh, America, this is a really unique shop. They'll actually fix anything fix shoes, fix your backpack, fix your suitcase. Where in the US, we'll just throw it away because it's cheaper to buy a new one. Labor is less here in Argentina, so you can actually fix all your stuff. It's really cool. This is mowing the lawn in Argentina. This is what it's like with a 19-inch uh, mower, a plug-in, and I don't know what kind of grass this is. He told me, but I didn't understand it. But it is The dog is sleeping. We just had some delicious snacks, some fruit, cheeses, and bread. The kids and one adult, Jeff, is swimming in the pool. And the gardener's over there trimming the bushes. I mean, does it get better than this? There you go, he's been going to town all day. He's been here all day long. All right, we're off for round two. Repacking the bikes, leaving from Salta, and we're almost ready. I like this road. It was about as wide as a wide 
bike path. I can't believe how narrow that road was. Then we saw these farmers on the side of the road that were cooking up some food. So we decided to stop and have food with them and their dogs. And they cook us some empanadas and some other things. And as we were eating, we got to not only see all these dogs around, but then all of a sudden there were a few pigs. These really cute pigs just popped out of nowhere that we got to uh, enjoy our lunch, lunch with. So this was a nice treat and a nice stop on the side of the road. As we got back on the road, we're in this area that is just like somewhere in Arizona. It's dry, it's a desert, and it has its own beauty. And we stopped in this little town, uh, not too far from the Bolivian board, border. It was um, Tilcara. And this was a beautiful little city we stayed in that night. And we had to get take this treacherous road to get up to the hotel. And I'm starting to climb this nasty road, and I'm climbing hammer down and all of a sudden my kickstand gets caught up in this fencing below boom right here and takes me over knocks me over so I gotta pick up the bike and then work on trying to get this kickstand out of this fencing mm -hmm. so this is the room little tiny hotel on the side of the mountain. Great view outside the window. A little terrace here. And a view of the city. are made out of salt and we're in the salt fields currently so we started climbing a few passes and we got to our first kind of full-on dirt road on the trip this dirt it's actually a lot harder to ride a bike on a dirt road than tarmac or asphalt this had a lot of ruts in it and it was really cool you had these um, llamas you can see that were everywhere there are wild llamas and uh, took a little time and practice to get used to the dirt road. Then we made it to our next town, and this is the hotel where the guys had the movie Long Way Up stayed, so it was cool to stop by and see the same place where they stayed. After that, we started to head up our biggest pass, which is about 16,000 feet, and we're gonna cross the Andes. We're on our way up the pass, and we ran into a little snow this afternoon. Looks like a light dusting that half an hour ago happened. We're starting on this dirt road, ready to cross the Andes. This dirt road was, was peaceful, it was beautiful, the views were amazing. And on the way up, we didn't see a single soul. There was nobody around. It was just the bikes, the land, and the wind blowing. The altitude was felt by me uh, very severely as you start to climb here. I could feel the pressure on my head. My body started to sense that we were getting to a really high altitude. And at the top of the mountain here, 
we were actually at 16,000 feet, the highest I've ever been. I did not want to stay up there long, but it was sure cool to experience. And then once we got to the top, it started to really get cold. The wind was blowing. In fact, the wind blows everywhere in Argentina, especially when you get to Patagonia. I think every day, every time I filmed, the wind was blowing and blowing and blowing. So eventually, um, we climbed this mountain. It's a little rough and bumpy on the way up. Um, there's turns and twists. We got a little snow on the way up. And eventually, we get uh, to the top. And it's just this, this, this epic moment of, of beauty and serenity. And I didn't want to stay there too long because I knew we were at 16,000 feet. But um, I did want to take it in. So as we get to the back side of the Andes, you gotta remember we climbed to the top and now we're heading down the other side. And as a motorcyclist, you hear about these river crossings and it's always something you wanna try. So on the way down, I'm guessing we had five to eight different river crossings where you had to uh, run the bike through the river. And at first, you know, the, the first one or two were kind of nerve wracking. How fast do you go? you know, what gear are you in, all these kind of things. But after you do a couple of them, they actually are quite fun. And uh, we, we had a just a blast uh, running through these rivers on the way down on the other side of the mountains. It was, it was just fun and beautiful. Last night, we stayed at this really cool hostel. It was eight bucks. It was amazing. Actually, the most comfortable bed I had yet. Bathroom. The lady here cooked me a nice dinner last night and a nice breakfast. Local dogs. There she is. Cooked me a good breakfast. Buenos dias. Hola. Hola. And then over here, this is where we kept the bikes at night in this covered parking. Right over here. It worked out really good. This was an awesome place to stay. The Andes the day before, we got to this little town. I was exhausted, I had a headache. And now we wake up in the morning to this Arizona-isk type scenery. There were green fields when we left the um, hostel in the morning. There were cactuses everywhere. Um, if I didn't know where I was, I'd tell you I was in Arizona. It's, it looked just like it. it. This was such a beautiful ride and it was mostly dirt the entire day. And the scenery would change. We'd run into cactus as you saw. We ran into trees and a little more greenery here. And it was just a fun day. Then we ran into this place that looked like the moon, and this was outrageous. They had a flood the night before, so the roads were flooded, and this place was unbelievable. So 
this is the place that I call the moon. I mean, because it looked like you landed on the moon. As I mentioned earlier, they had some rain the night before, so the roads, a lot of the roads were flooded and washed out, so we had to be extremely careful. There was a big tractor grader grading the roads, cleaning up from the rain the night before. Uh, the rain must have just pounded this area because most of the roads were wiped out. But they had these these rocks that had these jagged edges and this unique beauty that I've never saw before. These rocks were huge and tall. You'd look up at them and couldn't believe how how tall they were. The roads were quite sandy, so you had to be very careful on the bike because um, I, when you're riding a bike in the sand, it wants to, to run you everywhere and makes you feel like you're going to fall down. And then uh, we stopped, had a little hike, climbed to the top of this mountain here, took in the views and just um, took some pictures. It was one of the most beautiful spots I've seen so far. So we made it to a town called Cafeyate. And there, um, Jeff and I split up for the morning. He stayed in town and worked on his bike. That's what he likes to do. And I left and uh, headed out to a ride he recommended up, up the mountains. It was a road that headed back towards Salta. And this road was, as you can see here, it was, it was beautiful and amazing. It was green. It had jagged mountains everywhere. And uh, you could tell this was a, a tourist road. People were come up here to see things and to see the landscapes and to enjoy the, the views along the way. So this was about a half a day ride that I did uh, by myself. And, had a blast doing it. We all see these bikers on the road. I, I love seeing the bikers. It's amazing how many people are on, on bicycles. When I say bikers, I mean bicycles. And I just took the morning and enjoyed myself and took it all in and just, just had a blast being in this foreign country all alone. And it was it was the first time I was was really just just digging the whole experience. as we continue to the next city, Jeff warned me that there's these waterways. They don't build bridges here. They just build these dips in the road where when it rains, the water just runs right across the road. And you got to be careful because if the water's been sitting here for a while, you could fall over and, and break, break your arm or something. And in fact, he told me on a ride he did with a group before one guy went through these and, and broke both of his arms. So you had to really slow down and be careful to run through these, these waterways where the water would just sweep right through the road. They'd come back in the next day with a grader and a tractor and scrape all the mud up and clean the road again. But the rain just happened the night before. So we would actually run through these small temporary rivers and uh, get across the road. It was, was again a super unique experience that I've never seen before. But once you got through all those, you know, it was just nice to be out on the open road, especially when it was warm and beautiful. And what do you do when you're on the road? You listen to music, you listen to an audiobook, you think about life, you kind of just just are there with yourself. It's, it's a really fun, unique experience at times. And we keep riding and riding and riding and finally, you get to your next town, there's another biker we just passed. I love seeing the bikers. There's just so many of the, the bicyclists out there. And again, the northern part of Argentina is just like the desert in Arizona. 
here's another uh, temporary river that ran through the road that day. You see cool mountains, you see tunnels. I mean, you just never knew what was next. You, you, if you didn't like the view, just hang in for another 10 or 15 minutes or even one or two hours at the max, and you'll see completely different landscape and everything else. So it was, it was amazing because you just never knew what was next or what was around the next corner. This section of the road was really interesting. It was actually built in the mountain. They actually went ahead and tore out the side of the mountain and put the road actually in the mountain. So this was really cool to ride on and see. We spent the night at this farm that had a hostel slash hotel rooms available in it. And we watched these guys actually shear a sheep by hand. I think this is Merino wool, which is one of the largest industries in Argentina. Sí, un año. This is my friend Tita. Uh, Tita follows me around everywhere. Uh, for some reason she likes me, I don't know why, but I'm walking around the farm here and she can't stay away from me. There she comes. She, uh, she's my new friend. Oh, she sees a bird, but she'll come my way. She likes me, here she comes. There you see, everywhere I go, there she is. Well, this is how serious the citizens of Argentina take their football, which is soccer. But uh, they went on and cheered and had a parade for about an hour. It was amazing to see.
met these locals at the gas station and they said you need to take this different route that was off the 40. It's the back road and it's beautiful. So we took their suggestion. We run into things like this with ranchers moving their horses and cattle down the, the open highway. I mean, that's unique. And we went ahead and continued on to this uh, dirt road, which took us, I mean, right next, we were to, right on the border of Chile. We were right next to Chile. I mean, literally um, feet away from Chile. They were doing construction on this dirt road, so we kind of followed it over and, and uh, just enjoyed the day. It got kind of dusty at times because uh, the wind was blowing. Surprise, surprise. And uh, then we ended up uh, coming down off the mountain to this beautiful lake with the typical snow-capped mountains, which Patagonia is known for. And this is right when we entered Patagonia. This was one of my favorite cities. It was San Martin. It was very westernized and beautiful. Actually, I met a, a cool guy, Maxi, in town. It was uh, great. Then while we were there, I stopped and got an oil change. Uh, this guy uh, runs a little motorcycle shop, so he went ahead and uh, changed my oil, put a new oil filter in, and kind of cleaned everything up. He did a good job. and. It was uh, a little challenging speaking to him in my broken Spanish, but with my phone, we got it all taken care of. This is the outside of San Martin, which has a lake there. And again, this place was, was just gorgeous. On this rainy afternoon, we made it into Bariloche, which is a pretty good city. And we spent the time uh, getting our gear up in the hotel. And then that next morning, we went out on a ride to go view all the lakes. There's a lot of beautiful lakes and scenery around there. This area of the country reminds me of like Seattle or Portland, Oregon in the United States. It had that vibe and that feel. But as you can see here, the lakes and the mountains around the lakes. It was also equally as beautiful as many of the places that we have been to. This is Bariloche on the west side of Argentina. It's almost like the Pacific Northwest here. A lot of trees and colder.
right here I'm entering, uh, I'm going to pronounce it Parkview National Park, which is a national park right outside of um, a town called the Skell. This was a real treat and unexpected. Uh, this national park was, was beautiful with the typical Patagonia snow-capped mountains, lakes, and everything else around there. So we wandered into the park and took in the view mountain views and the snow-capped mountains. And then as we got deeper into the park, we um, were able to find some, some dirt roads and really got back there into the deep woods of the national park. And this was, was such a treat because it was unexpected and so beautiful. motorcycle like this in a different country you're by yourself on the bike a lot so you do a lot of introspection and you're in nature and it makes you really think about a lot of things and I came up on this day with the thought of I'm just grateful I'm grateful to be here I'm grateful that everything's working so well I'm grateful for my current life and and when you see these gigantic mountains and everything else, how can you not be grateful and feel good about life? We stayed at this guy's place who built his house into this container and he had five hotel rooms he rented out. He was a super nice guy. Then we got back on the road and started heading across Argentina. At this point we decided to go east and cross the country and this was a, a pretty desolate drive in the sense that it was somewhat barren and I, I think we only saw five, six, seven cars the entire day on this road. but. Before we got across the country, we ended up stopping at a place to camp in this little, little town that was built right below a dam. And we got to go ahead and camp out for the night. It was our first camping trip. It was actually kind of cool to do. Uh, I didn't know this, but it's so inexpensive and easy to camp in hostels and hotels. We did that most of the time. This is camping in Argentina. Got the bathrooms over here and some little camp spots to pull your vehicle in and set up your tent.
Once we made it completely across Argentina and got to the East Coast, we stopped at Peninsula Valdez and decided to take a day and get on the dirt roads and tour the peninsula. Uh, here we saw ocean views, we saw seals, we saw sea lions. Technically, I think they're called elephant seals. They have tons of elephant seals here. And it took a whole day to tour the peninsula. There's a lot of wild llamas, a lot of sheep out here just roaming around because there's a lot of sheep farmers and beautiful ocean views that had tons of seals and sea lions at the bottom you can see there. So near the end of the day, as we're touring the Peninsula of Valdez, we stopped and did a penguin tour. And these penguins were everywhere. They say there's anywhere between 600 to 800,000 penguins at this location. These guys were, they just had babies, I would say, a month or so ago. You can see some of the babies here in the, the video. And they lived to be about 30 years. And these guys are unique in the fact that they summer here in the summertime, and then they swim over to Brazil and live in Brazil in the winter months where it's a little warmer. And in Brazil, the unique thing is that they live in the water 100% of the time when they're in Brazil. So they, they eat, sleep, and do everything in the water. I, I asked the lady, I said, how do they sleep in the water? She said, they float really good. They get on their back they're with their bellies up and they just float. So I can't imagine being in the water for half the year, 100% of the time, but but they are. Um, these Here's a, a mom with her babies and you can see they're attending to their babies. They generally have a mate, the same mate for life, unless one of them gets killed. And the way they eat and hunt is that the penguins will go out and hunt out in the ocean, maybe 60 kilometers away, bring back a whole bunch of fish. And then what happens is if the father or, or mother went out for the first time, they will switch. And then the opposite sex will go out and go hunt again. And they kind of share the hunting duties. They're really cool to see. I like to see them walk slash waddle like this. And it was a great experience to get this close to them. On this particular day, it was a decision we had to make whether we are gonna take the highway or this dirt road that we ended up on. This was Highway 1 that followed the coast, and it was a, a beautiful route. We ran into the, several unique things. There was these sand dunes that you can see that just popped up out of nowhere and with some real sandy roads with the ocean right next to you. 
and this ocean was empty. There was nobody there. It was so deserted. It was it was it was kind of eerie and cool, all at the same time. Then we ran into these pods that it looks like they rent out for camping. I thought those were amazing. I thought this would be a good place to stay, though we weren't planning on staying here for the night. And this would have been a good place to camp. It was a really cool day, and there was all kinds of interesting, interesting findings along the way. Right here is a little town that we found on the way uh, into our next stop that was in the middle of nowhere, so that was really cool also. Well, I've got a problem here. You're running down the dirt road, got a flat tire, and literally in the middle of nowhere. And there, as you can see, there's no shade. Horrible place to get a flat tire. Uh, Jeff, who I'm traveling with, was ahead of me. I don't know, about 50 meters, and he's down that way, so. I'm hoping he realizes I'm not behind him and comes back. He has the tube and the air compressor. Uh, so I will wait here in the sun for him to return so we can fix this flat and get on the road. The, when we rented the bike, the tires aren't that great and uh, they should have been better, but I think I hit a piece of rock or something and uh, gave me a flat. So I wish I could say I'm gonna go under a tree and, and relax, but I'm gonna be in the sun and wait for Jeff to come back. As you can see, I'm ready, sun blocked up, got my gloves on, hat, gator. <laughs> I'm ready to be here for a little while, so hopefully it's not too long. We'll see what happens, we'll get this tire fixed, and get back on the road. Check out this elevator, it's totally manual. Take a step back here. Oops, wrong way. There you go. Here's the door. Safety door. Door shut. Second door shut. How's that? All right. So this is the last day on the bike. She's made it. Uh, this bike needs some maintenance. It, uh, it vibrates really hard because the the tires are uneven, so it's doo -doo 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 going down the road. Um, the chain keeps loosening up every couple days after we tighten it. And as you can see, the, the tire is on its last leg. So, probably not the, the best rental. I'm not sure on the Himalayan fan, but she's done the job. She got it done. And uh, my learning lesson is next time I'd probably rent a nicer bike. Just because if you have a nice bike, the experience is much better, I believe. But she made it, she almost made it. We got one more day, three to 400 kilometers today, and we are back to Buenos Aires. And she hung in there. Well, now we're on the last day of the trip. And this last day is a lot of, asphalt and we're out to the point now where it's like let's just get home it's been a long four weeks and now it's time to, to get back home uh, it's still enjoyable it was a beautiful day uh, a windy day as always it's always windy in, in Argentina I mean I don't know that we had a day without wind maybe we did but I don't remember it and this road that we're on as we get closer to Buenos Aires, was packed with semi-trucks and things like that. 75% of the population lives in Buenos Aires or the surrounding area, and the rest of the population lives in the other parts of the country. So once we got outside the Buenos Aires area, there were hardly any cars, there wasn't a lot of people, it was very uh, low population, it was beautiful, it was amazing, it was like, probably going back to the United States 50 years ago. It, it was really cool to see. So um, at this point, we're, we're itching and ready to get home. 
My favorite place to stop on the road was the YPF gas stations. Not just any gas station, but the YPF. The service was great, the people are awesome, the food inside was amazing. Plus, one of these young kids gave me his hat, which is my greatest, one of my greatest treasures from the trip. So in Argentina, they go through cars, they ride on the side of the road like this. I guess it's maybe not legal, but no one gives you tickets for it usually and they just look past it. So we went ahead and there was this long line that was stopped for construction. So went ahead and took on the right shoulder, passing all these cars and trucks because we didn't want to pass them on the two lane road again. And as we get to the front of this line, there's a guy here that's completely upset that we went ahead and used the right shoulder. And so he gets here and he wants to um, give me a piece of his mind and he starts to proceed to tell me that what I'm doing is awfully wrong and that I need to be so far away from the car, I need to be on the other side of the white line. Um, he is pretty upset with me and goes on to tell me how upset he is. Um, the people who live in Argentina say, I don't know why this guy is so upset. We do this all the time. But later on down the road, we see that they're having some type of professional function. So I think this guy wanted to be in his best behavior and show us that rules really are rules. But in Argentina, I've learned that everybody breaks the rules there. So I'm back to Buenos Aires and we're actually having lunch slash dinner at P.F. Chang's. And Here's two girls, a guy, and I'm just amazed. They have nothing to do, so they start to clean. And I ask myself, how in the heck do we get Americans to act like this? This is amazing. Now we're just a couple of miles from our home slash Buenos Aires destination. Dropping back off the bike, I'm glad we're dropping it off. I'm, it, it did good for me, but I do not want to ride a bike like that again, I'll tell you that. And um, we're dropping it off and saying goodbye. All right, so I wanted to show you the route of the trip. Uh, we started here, I flew into Buenos Aires, and that's when we went down to Azul, had bike damage, came back to Buenos Aires. Then I rented a bike uh, in Salta up here. So we flew to Salta and actually started the trip all over again in Salta. Uh, went up north here, uh, maybe about uh, 80, mile, 80 kilometers from the Bolivian border, then back down on 40 and ran this route the whole way on 40. And you can see we actually got pretty close to Chile here. We never went into Chile, but we stayed in Argentina the whole time. All the way down here to Mendoza, past Mendoza, all the way down to Chosmalal. And then I had to flip the map over, continue on Chosmalal, down here to San Martin, uh, San Carlos Biloche, um, Esquel, which was a very nice place. Then once we got to Esquel, the plan you can see was to get down here to the, the bottom part of Argentina, not all the way down to Ushuaia, but our goal was to get to here. And as you can see, we didn't make it to the bottom here. Uh, it was just too far, too much time. So we came over from Esquel over here and shot over across the country, over to here to Trilo. 
Uh, we were warned not to stop here. This is a pretty dangerous town, so we just passed on by. Went over here um, to the uh, Peninsula Islands here and uh, did a loop over here. This is where we saw the penguins and everything else. Came over here and uh, stayed in um, uh, near Port Madryn down there. Then came back up down here to Vimena, then to uh, Bahia Blanca, and then back to Buenos Aires. So here's a um, bottom look of the map on that section. And here's the bigger layout of the map and what we drove. I'll go ahead and list the kilometers. I haven't added them up yet, but I'll list them on the screen here of how far we actually traveled. This was a once in a lifetime amazing trip. I want to thank everybody who made this possible. You know who you are. There's too many to mention at this point. But I want to leave you with a reminder of the windy Argentina Patagonia landscape.